What is going on, everybody? Good morning. Today is May 3rd, 2024. Today is my birthday. One year older. I don't look a day under 65, right? Uh, we have an update from SDF. And uh, in summary, multi-classing is dead. Well, the days are numbered. Anyway, they're phasing it out. And they're going to create something else, I guess. As a reminder, and hey, maybe even in celebration, as soon as this video is live, I will be live over at twitch.tv slash one peg, so come by and say hi if you feel like it. Early access, hotfix number 45, 9.45 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when the timer begins. Two hours service will return. 40 minutes remaining to be able to finish matches, so we should end up seeing the game come back somewhere around noon Eastern Standard Time, I would say. Changes. Fix an issue where players could not loot after defeating Ghost King. Fix an issue where the High Roller Warlord's rewards were not appropriate. Uh, Warlord uh, in HR was giving like normal uh, Warlord level loot, so they ended up finally fixing that. Dark Reflection Attribute Bonus Ratio changed from 100% to 50%. So one of the big issues with Dark Reflection was it was doing a ton of damage. These Thorns builds and stuff were being uh, touted on on YouTube, and there was some hilarious moments where guys were smacking them and just ended up taking like a ridiculous amount of damage from guys that had been stacking spell damage along with a bunch of resourcefulness. And it was it was pretty good. Warlock Blow of Corruption attribute bonus ratio changed from 100% to 50%. Again, Blow of Corruption was, uh, for all intents and purposes, pretty overpowered. Uh, guys were hitting for an absurd amount of damage, especially if they were using a two-hander. You saw a lot of uh, a lot of barbarians deciding to multi-class for this, using their shouts and whatnot to slow people, and then end up getting uh, like easy cleaved headshots for an awful lot of damage. Explosive bottle damage changed from 3 to 1 and no longer scales. This change I also kind of agree with. The amount of damage that was capable of being output for people that were a casting focus, cleric, warlock, wizard, versus people that weren't, or like maybe even a rogue that was scaling magic damage on their gear for better poison ticks, that kind of stuff ended up kind of making it a little bit too strong. And the amount of zone control was replaced by a desire to... I guess, damage the shit out of people by using the bottles. There were even YouTube videos where warlocks were throwing bottles like this as a pyromancer build that seemed like it was a little bit too strong. The area accessible by double jumping in the ice cavern has been limited, which is, uh, again, I think a good change. There were some really uh, funky places that people were able to get to an ice cave by double jumping. The high roller name tag appears again. If you haven't been playing or been playing primarily on normal, if you ended up doing high roller, the name plates above everybody's head that kind of gave you an idea where your teammates were wasn't uh, in the game. They were taken out for a little while, giving it more of a hardcore feel. I feel like this kind of contributed to the confusion. I kind of was okay with it, though, because coming from a Tarkov background, you never really had to worry so much about, like, whose name was above whose head. You just had to have good comms. This game isn't Tarkov, and the devs are going to make the game the way that they want to make it and the way that the community feels like it should be. So this is kind Kind of like a it's okay either way map rotation is back for all party types this is an interesting change too people want the freedom of choice to be able to play whatever map that they want to but they also want to have lobbies where people are going to be around to be able to play against them the issue with uh the the size of the player base being what it is at any given moment in time is that you end up having dead lobbies the more queues there are available for people to be able to run on them i think what they're trying to do is find a happy medium in between where you end up having the ability to uh play solo for instance on all of the maps should you so choose but not be stuck having to play goblin caves every single time that you want to play solo i'm not sure what the cooldown would be for something like this but if it's anything like last time it would be about a five minute window to be able to queue up for each one and then the map would shift so not really a bad thing and then lastly mind wipe has no time limits kind of like a last hurrah for phasing out this system we would like to thank everyone who helped us with our multi-class experiment we learned a ton from this system and from your feedback here are our thoughts we'd like to share we had limited development resources to work on large systems this season since we were already falling behind schedule and content delivery. We saw good engagement with grind-based systems like the Adventure Leaderboard and Quest System in the previous season. We thought that having to do that grind again, even with the changes, would not be engaging enough, so wanted to try and give it another long-term goal players could work toward that could be implemented with less investment from the design team who were focused on content for the next major push. We knew that character building is a core motivation for many users, we thought that the multi-class system would be a powerful incentive for those players to flex their creative muscles. The other motivation for testing this multi-class system was our desire to finally start designing the class progression system since it had been shown in the coming soon status for far too long. They're referring to the talent trees. We had wanted to incorporate a multi-class concept into the class progression system early on. 
As we quickly added lots of perks and skills to the game, things got a bit unwieldy under the hood, making it more daunting for us to start the design work. I think I just said unwieldy instead of unwieldy. The multi-class system was a way for us to leverage the creativity and curiosity of the fan base, fusing crazy combinations to uncover the less than ideal bits of code and help us tidy up our implementation. In this aspect, the experiment was a success as the underlying execution of the perks and skills have been greatly improved. What did we learn? We see the multi-class system as a success when it comes to helping us improve the technical state of the game and reining in unintended interactions. This will help us greatly when we start to build the next class progression system for a future season. However, when it comes to improving the overall game experience, we fell short. We learned a lot from this test due to the wide diversity of builds built by players, but also learned about it going too far and diluting class identity. In the future, we'll do better by maintaining class identity while still enabling options to explore less traditional character builds. We also learned that too much RNG for a core component such as class progression, especially gated behind a long grind, is a recipe for disaster. Agreed. The reward for long-term investments should be more deterministic to allow for strategic planning. If there is a high volatility, or if there is high volatility in a core reward that locks players into a limited playstyle, then the opportunity to earn it should not be limited by excessive time commitments. What will we do? So far, I feel like SDF is nailing this. Uh, he's hitting the nail on the head. Since we feel that the current implementation is counter to our vision going forward, we plan to remove multiclassing. However, for one week, as a final farewell to this system, we will remove the timer restrictions on mind wipes so players can create their wildest creations for a limited time. After this week, we will completely remove the multi-class system and return to our original class system. We are working on ideas for a newer class progression system and will announce details once we have something more concrete to share. At least for now, we'll have the traditional class system until the next season. Thank you. So I'm I'm completely fine with this. And, and I agree with all of the sentiment here so far. The the And I've said this from the beginning. Obviously, the idea behind this was to test it. They knew that there was going to be a lot of really OP builds. The problem was if somebody rolled the OP build, they would just continue to use it and they would roll people. It was fun to experiment with the different meme combinations and whatnot, but at the end of the day, people were just looking for like some devastatingly powerful combo of, of abilities that gave them the ability to like nearly one-shot anyone that they came across. I'm looking at you, BOC smite stiletto wielding poison rogue. We'd also like to share our thoughts on the current matchmaking and map system. Although we had originally promised the return of map selection for solo queue, we're sorry to announce that we'll not be able to fulfill that promise at this time. The original, the original intention behind giving players the choice to select their map was to improve gameplay variety, which is still part of our goal. Unfortunately, based on our current matchmaking data, we realized that splitting the player pools for the solo matchmaking would be unsustainable due to player flow at off-peak times, even in high pop regions. Our goal is to get players into good quality matches in a quick manner while offering map variety, and this has led us to consider a complete overhaul of the matchmaking system, which we will share with you soon. That is both interesting and kind of terrifying to me. I'm not going to lie, because I'm not sure what a complete overhaul means. This was also the reason why we implemented several rat play mechanics to test the viability of solo players in a party lobby in consideration for combining player pools. Although the tests are ongoing based on current feedback, we believe that improving support of multiple queue types rather than combining pools is the more realistic option, even though this presents a difficult design challenge for us. While we work on re renewing the matchmaking to better support multiple queues, we still want to offer players more map diversity in the interim. Although we are aware of issues with the previous map rotation system, we believe this system is the best available solution to offer map variety within the limitations of the current population and matchmaking system. To ease issues of non-agency, we will implement map rotations with an extremely short rotation timer, there you go, to make it easier to wait it out if a map you dislike is active. We are aware of the side effects of the short timers, but believe the pros outweigh the cons until the fully renewed matchmaking system is launched. Thank you. I'm I'm cool with this. Uh, it, it like I said, it's probably somewhere around five minutes, maybe three minutes. Maybe it's the duration of a single lobby's uh, queue timer. Um, and and I think I think for, at least for now, this creates a, a middle ground where people have the ability to, based on the pi the size of their party, they can queue for a map and play on that one instead of trying to shoehorn this in with 140 different queuing pools with the MMR differences and all of this other stuff. Even though it's not MMR right now, it's gear-based. It looks as though they are gaining some, at least on paper, valuable knowledge about what it is that they are hoping to accomplish with these different systems as they're trying to fashion their game in a way that makes the player base mostly happy with it. I am I am rather excited about the idea behind a talent tree. I think that the the best way to be able to fashion this game would be to have players focus on a specific series of talents that puts them down a path towards specialization of some kind. If you're going to be an axe-wielding barbarian, 
have a series of talents that are going to send them down that line. That specialization also opens up the ability for multi-class stuff. In Dungeons & Dragons, which is what Dark & Darker is roughly based on, the idea was always if you were going to multi-class, you would end up with like the weakest stuff for that multi-class uh, class first. You didn't have access to the entire library of stuff because the highest level spells, abilities, whatever, you had to be a higher level in that class to be able to use them. In this case, in Dark and Darker, you're just given the entire library and be given the strongest abilities, talents, whatever, to be used right off of the rip. Instead of forcing people to go down some form of a progression tree like what there should really be, people were just able to use everything. And that obviously created all of this OP stuff. So I think what it really comes down to is having the developers work on what the different core foci are going to be for each one of these individual classes, flesh out some good talent trees, and then if people want to multi-class, they have to start from one and work their way forward. Otherwise, to be completely honest, I don't see how the subclassing of this system is ever going to work. Not in a way that's meaningful, anyway. Anyway, guys, that's what I have for this one. Thanks so much for coming and checking it out. Please come by the stream if you would be so kind. Otherwise, you can uh, sub the channel here if you end up enjoying the content. In the meantime, uh, I guess I'll say thank you for lending me your ear holes. Notice I didn't say eyeballs this time. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next one, okay? Thanks. Peace.